generic greetings and welcome back to Science Insanity, our lovely podcast show thing where we bring my love of science fiction to all of you with our lovable tagalong Steve playing the role of the science illiterate as we educate him along with all of the laymen about the glorious wonders and absolute insanity that we're going to be delving into. Say hello, Steve. Hello. This classic intro every single time. However, today, big, special, thank you very much to everyone that got us over 1,000 subs. We are monetized! Finally, the YouTube stuff went through, everything works. This is, if I am correct on my scheduling, the first video we are going to upload that is fully monetized. Money! Ads! Congratulations, you absolute fools! We we make, like, hour-long, long-form content. You're gonna have, like, seven mid-roll ads. Good job, idiots. Thanks for making us popular. You brought this all upon yourselves. We're not sorry. You brought this suffering upon yourself. Honestly, I didn't expect to hit a thousand as fast as we did. I would have prepared something a little more special for it or a little more grandiose, but the last couple videos just catapulted us forward so fast I didn't have time to do anything. So today we're kind of playing catch up. We are going to be going over all of the large cannon capital ships of the colonial fleet. Everything from the first Cylon War, covering a little bit of that original series goodness, to the during the Cylon War and the post Cylon War modern ships like the Mercury. Oh, that beautiful bastion of badassery. We're not going to be covering any of the smaller craft like the fighters and stuff because, well, to be perfectly honest, there's really not that many of them. And also, we can milk those for future episodes now that we are, once again, monetized. But also, it's just not that interesting. There's like three versions of, of the Viper and like two versions of the, the Raptor, so not really important. Hey, if y'all want us to cover it, though, I mean, we will. Oh, we'll, we'll get there eventually. We'll, we'll get to everything eventually. Even if it takes us like 40 years, I promise, we'll get to your favorite topic eventually. Everything is Soon, on the list. Soon, <laughs> Soon. <laughs> Science and sanity trademarks. Soon. <laughs> And we're going to start off with the pre-Cylon War, and we are going to be starting out with a big, chunky boy, the Janus. So, firstly, let me, let me throw an image for you in there, Steve, or a couple of them. The Janus is a very, very old colonial ship. This thing was designed before the Cylons were, back during the age of colonial fighting. Just like the Imperial Age, when the Colonials were going to town on one another and you had the good old British Empire in space, trademark. This thing was basically designed to be a colossal missile boat. It may look intimidating, it may look like it's heavily armored, but it's not. Those giant engines are to get it the hell out of dodge before anything with any substance slaps into it, because it's, it's pretty damn weak. But it does have the most missiles of, like, almost any ship in the war, which is why it's still used during the current Cylon War, because this, this big bastard can put so many missiles into space that it doesn't matter if everything else on it is literally falling apart. As long as they put some modern munitions in it, that thing still works. The good old missile frigate. <laughs> Glass cannon. Pretty much, yeah. What, like, what I love about it, though, is just look how angular it is. I don't know what's up with I, the engines in the back. They put a cinder block on the back for the engines. But... Yeah, it kind of just messed it up with that, but everything else on it looks good. They tapered the back a little bit in. I mean, the engines could have looked good on it, but yeah, if if they, they gave it far if, too much, if they gave it the sloping engines that you see on like the Galactica or something, that that probably would have fit way better. We have another ship coming up later called the Adamant, which looks very similar, but it does the engines way way better. So yeah, that's that's our first ship. The Janus is really, really old. This is a pre-Cylon War design, and there's only a couple of them that are actually still kicking around. Most of the pre-Cylon designs were either destroyed, stolen by the toasters when the Great Revolt happened, or they were decommissioned shortly after because they were just absolutely ineffective. And moving on from that, where the Janus was the big missile cruiser, we are... Uh, we're moving on to the Heracles, or the Hercules. I, I can't remember how you actually pronounce this. Oh boy, this is your big, big gunboat. And I, I honestly- a long boy right oh, there. Oh, it's, it's very long. This is, so 
a lot of the colonial ships of the Cylon War era, they're much smaller than you would expect, but all of these pre-Cylon War era ones, the Imperial era ships, these things are big. Like, they're the size of, of battle stars. Like, you look at the Artemis or the Jupiter class, and they're, like, almost as long as those things are, and pretty damn hefty. They're, they're big ships, and they were designed to be very, very big. Um, so, this thing is basically just a gunboat. In fact, it's actually a predecessor for the Battlestar class of ships because it was designed to be functionally omnipurpose. It has a ton of guns. It's one of the first ships the Colonials made that can put out the flak screen. So if it needs to, it can just give the middle finger to all guided munitions and fighter craft. And it's designed to be super heavily armored, relatively maneuverable, and have devastating firepower. The only thing this thing is actually lacking is, like, dedicated uh, fighter craft. I don't think it really matters. I mean, look at it. It's a brick shithouse of a design. It's a massive brick of nothing but guns and armor, and I love it. Bringing in that uh, old British design, it's gotta be big, because it's important. The Heracles, or the Hercules, you know, I'm just gonna call it the Heracles, because I like that pronunciation better. It's, um, okay. this is actually where, like, the colonial design principles of guns on the top and bottom of the ships actually come from. Uh, like, the Galactica, for example, has most of its guns on the top and bottom of the ship, and this is kind of where that starts. So, colonial vessels usually want to be oriented relatively under their opponent in space, because, all like, most of their firepower goes upwards. And the reason it does that is because it kind of... You see all the spacing on the top, those like raised gun platforms and stuff that the uh, Heracles has. The reason it's the reason it's got those is because it's got like multi layers of thick armor, and that's what the Colonials kind of copied uh, with the Battle Stars going forward. Is when they're engaging from the front or from above, they have like layers of super thick armor and the guns up there. So that's like their preferred method of engaging with the enemy, and this is kind of like the predecessor to all of that. By the way, this is less of, like, an exposition dump and more like a, a commentary thing, so feel free to just, like, go out there and ask questions or comment on it. No, I don't think I will. I hate you. <laughs> why, are, why are you like this? It's what you brought me here for. Alright, you know what? Whatever. Screw you. We're, we're moving on to the big centerpiece. The last pre-Cylon War era ship that is, like, officially canon the Artemis Battlestar. This is the first Battlestar, like the class of ship ever built, and this is actually like a modernization of the original series. So the the modern or the most recent Battlestar Galactica series is just Battlestar Galactica, right? And they right. basically overhauled everything, but what they did was they went to the original series and they basically copied the models and stuff, did some rejiggering to get rid of the energy weapons and all of that, and replaced it with the kinetic weapons and the missiles and stuff. And they came out with the Artemis. Instead of just straight up removing it from the canon or just denying that it ever existed, like retconning it, they just went, nope, this is the prototype first design of the Battlestar, and it is basically what became for all the future ones. Um... It's a command ship, like a hybrid command ship battle carrier. You can see on the top there, like the Janus, it's got all of the guns on the top and on the bottom that you can't see. It's got super heavy armor on the prow and on the top, and it even has the flight pods now. And you'll notice if you look at the engines, they look the engines look very similar to what you had on the Janus. So yeah, this is the first Battlestar. It's the smallest one that... Or, no, not the smallest one, but the smallest, like, mainline uh, Battlestar. Yeah, it looks beautiful. I know a lot of people think this is like the best design in the series. Those people are wrong. I will admit that it's pretty damn beautiful, but it does not compare to the Mercury or the Valkyrie or the Jupiter. It, it just doesn't. I'm sorry to all you people that love this. It's cool. It's not as cool as the other ones. It's top 10 for sure, though. Top, top 10. Oh, absolutely. Also, this is where you can see something that's a massive design flaw for the old pre-Cylon War era ships. For some ungodly reason, the bane of my existence in all science fiction, the stupidest design principle ever in all sci-fi, they put the bridge on the outside of the ship, just randomly exposed. That's pretty good. You, yeah, you, you see those, like, stepped, that, like, tiered thing on the front of the Artemis? 
Yes. Yeah. Those are those are windows. Those are glass windows. That's the bridge. It's just right there. That, that's pretty good. Yeah. You can Surely put. Nothing will ever go wrong with that. You can, you can put a missile or a shell directly into the captain's pants, and it's just like, it's, why? Why would you do this? The ships don't have shields. That's not the kind of sci-fi universe this is. It's just, oh, it's awful. It's heavily armor the prow. But then let's put this massive weak spot right in the I know! It's so miss. bad. It's so bad. Because, you know, we're humans, you know? We gotta be able to see outside. That's that's what we're like. <laughs> <laughs> Open the window and do a drive-by. <laughs> that's why we have windows on airplanes, man. I mean, some things just never change. Oh my god, it's so cringeworthy. It's awful. Regardless, though, those are the only uh, those are the only pre Cylon War ships that are still around, um, and they are basically just holdovers that found their niche in the Colonial Navy. Most of them aren't built anymore because they're so resource intensive and generally ineffective outside their given role that they're just not worth the effort. So as they're destroyed, they're generally not rebuilt, but there's such large numbers of them that they bulk out quite a few fleets. So, uh, for that last one, dude, I, I, I know this ain't what they are, but this is what I'm calling them. Those, uh, external drop tanks, um, <laughs> do those, like, come back up into the ship? Because that would be pretty good. Yes, they do. Those are called flight pods. Good. Uh, I, I, external drop tank. Uh, d d d d no, <laughs> stop. There's, that's not, that's not what they are. That's absolutely not what they are. That's, stop. Cease. <laughs> <laughs> yes they do though to answer your question yes they do you see those slats okay, yeah you, you see like by the yeah. core those slat things yeah the, the actual flight pods what, retract it was, yeah but i wasn't sure <laughs> but after that we come to the first cylon warships the modern colonial navy the stuff that was replacing the old stuff and the first thing we're going to go for is the smallest ship, the most useless ship, and the ship class that hey, in... This doesn't matter. Yes, it does, because in, in Battlestar Galactica <laughs> Deadlock, they are literally useless. They exist to die. And that is the Manticore. I'll be honest, though, it it's a really, really cool-looking ship. It's a very, very light frigate-class ship. It literally only has one light cannon tucked just under the front of the nose and on the dorsal side, which is the top of a spaceship, uh, just behind the main armored prow, it's got two light like auto cannons. So it's got like a big artillery cannon on the front, which is still considered small, and then it's got like two smaller auto cannons on the back. It is very underarmed. But in order to kind of make up for that, to make it a little bit less useless in terms of gunpower, because it also has really limited gun firing angles, in the center of the ship, it has four missile tubes that it can fire. So it can fire volleys of up to four missiles, and it carries a few dozen of them inside. The, the thing looks like it has, like, negative armor. So is it fast at least? Uh, it is one of the fastest ships that the Colonials have, but the problem is, like, not fast enough to get away from everything chasing it, and the range of missiles and stuff, once it gets detected on Dratus, is, like, dozens of times farther away than the Manticore could possibly get before it gets slapped. So again, this thing is really, it, like, it's not meant for combat. It was never designed for combat. It's just, it's a light escort, it's commerce protection, and it's anti-piracy. That's pretty much it. Um, moving up from that, though, the first actual ship of the line, one of my favorite ships as well. I think this is, like, one of the best designs to come out of Battlestar Galactica Deadlock. Com computer just posted the images. The Adamant. This thing is fantastic, and this is, like, in my opinion at least, actually a baby Battlestar. It's got all of the hallmarks of a Battlestar. It's just much smaller and much... I guess, easier to produce and use. So you see on the sides there how it's got those four main artillery guns on each side mounted like amidships. And then fighter bays below it, it looks like? Yep. There's a little split in the armor, and there's a bay that you fly the Vipers back into from the front of the ship. And then they got all the maintenance and stuff inside, and they actually launch them out of the tubes just like the Battlestar does. So this thing can combat deploy its Vipers very quickly. It's got the classic, like, alligator head armored prow. It's very well I, defended. I don't like that flat nose on it, though. It just makes it look a little weird. What do you mean? It's got, like, the same style flat nose as, like, the Mercury yeah. does. 
Yeah, but it doesn't look as good on this. Really? I think it looks fantastic. How how else would they cap it's off? It's a little bit too big for what the ship is. Either cut it back so it's not so long. Or, I mean, I'd, I'd be fine with either of those. You don't have to make it like a full point, though. Just make that nose a little bit smaller. Oh, like the rounded, like the smaller or bigger, yeah. the rounded head on the manticore or something. Yeah, I could, I could kind of see that. I personally really like the way it looks as is because it, it looks like a small battle star. I just like that aesthetic. To me, the ratio of it's just a little, a little off. That's all that is. Is that windows I see too? On, on the front, yeah. I don't know what those windows are, but I That's know that they good. are. I, I know that they are windows. Uh, these, these designs though, we're starting to get away from fucking windows on on these things uh that might actually be like the rec room on the front of the ship because uh the center of the ship is devoted for all of the vital stuff that's like the citadel and the armored prow is usually for the command and control center and then like further forward is the non-essential stuff like you know crew living spaces and things or amenities so that might be like the ship's onboard lounge or something <laughs> looking out into space i don't know I, I know that that's not the bridge, because the bridge is, like, dead in the center way, of that alligator head. It's not a good design. It's not a good design, okay? But it's less egregious than having the bridge there, because I know for a fact the bridge on the adamant is, like, in the dead center of that alligator head. It's really good. It's, it's like, the normal uh, colonial ship of the line. It's the kind of cruiser that they use for literally everything, from patrols to escorts to even being the center point of a fleet if you've got a couple of them together. Uh, moving on from that, we are covering the Minotaur now, and this thing is like a bigger version of the Adamant, except it is focused exclusively on guns. It is very heavily armored, it's very big, it doesn't have missiles, it doesn't have any fighter squadrons, it is just guns. You notice on the alligator head, it's got some guns on the front directly in the prow, as well as some guns on the bottom, so it's got that forward-facing firepower. But most of its guns are on the top of the ship and on the broadside. So just like most colonial ships in the modern era, this thing prefers to be underneath its target and on the broadside to get the most possible guns firing. I, I mean, it, it doesn't look as good as the last one. No, it kind of doesn't. My... So I, I think this is a really cool design. I don't like it as much as a lot of the other ones because a lot of colonial designs have that like... <laughs> the, they got like the, the fucking fupa that's just sticking out the sides. Like, what, else, what else do you call that? It's just like, it's like a, it's just rolls. It's got rolls that are coming off the side of the ship and they didn't, they didn't blend it in naturally with the design of the ship. They've got the engines on the back, they've got the alligator head, they've got the center part, and then they just stuck a cinder block on the side of each ship and went there. Well, it's even got dead flat center parts on it facing forward that you like just it's a little yeah. weird. I'll I'll grant you that. I still think, think it's a cool you got design. The, the front of the engines uh, they're exposed too. It's part of it is. Yeah, I mean the... There, so there's lore reasons for that. It still looks bad, but the lore reasons are that, like, for the most part, they're not getting hit that much. And also, the Colonials need to skimp wherever they can on whatever they can, because they can't afford to, like, perfectly build everything. They're running out of resources, and they kind of need to, to cut corners wherever they can. So don't make the thing three miles wide out from it and <laughs> just cover the engine. <laughs> <laughs> don't make it three miles it a little bit You'll, it'll work better i promise it is a pretty big ship yeah the other problem is a lot of colonial ships are painted orange which is just the, the worst orange and gray the, it, orange is just like the worst color the the colonial ships are either red or orange if they're red i think it looks really good against like the gray or the sometimes like off white that they have in lore, they even say this thing was, like, cobbled together to be really durable and really shit simple. And they just went, there you go. Tons of guns, tons of fun. And then they just send it out as, like, a main line battleship. There's so many flat sections on it. It's, looks like someone <sighs> just stepped on it and deformed the whole thing. <laughs> it's, <laughs> it's like someone put it in a clamp in Auto Shop and tightened it a little too tight and just squished yeah. it flat. 
Whereas the Minotaur is really heavily armed and armored and is designed to be a frontline combat ship, the Ranger is basically a standoff missile platform. And I personally really, really love the look of this ship. I think it is... Oh, computer, come on. I, I think it's beautiful. I really like this. Is it just because there's no orange on it in that first picture? Is, uh, is that why? There's red on it in the second picture. Part of the reason... But firstly, it just, like, it makes sense on Colonial design, and I think it just looks cool. Like, the center section, you'll notice the actual alligator head blocks off, like, the vast majority of the ship. And that's actually sensible design. That's the most armored part of the ship. If you're getting shot at, the most armored part of the ship blocks shells from hitting the engines. It blocks them from hitting your guns. It blocks them from hitting all of your heavy artillery and missile launch bays and stuff. It's like, it's good design. It looks a little fugly, don't get me wrong, like, it looks like a club, you pick it up by the engines and you swing it. Um, and the Ranger, like I mentioned, is basically designed to be a missile boat. Similar to the Janus, the first ship we talked about, this thing just vomits out missiles. Um, and behind the alligator head on the bottom is where the launchers are, with a couple on the top as well. It is like the second most missile-heavy ship that you have. The only other thing, like, notable thing is... On the front, uh, on the bottom of the alligator head, it's got a few heavy guns on there, some heavy artillery guns. Is that a bridge with uh, glass windows to see in the front there, though? Um, I don't think so. There's nothing okay. on that. Like, it's... I don't know what those are. I think those are just the random greeblies that they add on to ships to give them texture and stuff. Like, you, you can look, it's got like a fin, almost, on the top of the ship. Um, yeah. Yeah, I, that, I don't know if that serves any purpose. I think it might just be like a little gribbly that they put on there for, for fun. Uh, moving, moving on from that, the Berserk Light Assault Carrier, and that is a mouthful. It is a terrible name. This is a terrible, terrible name. But I will be honest. We just call it the Belac or something? Uh, I guess, but... I'm, I'm going to be honest. It's it's not the best design. It's not a sensible design. What is that? <laughs> it's... Yeah, okay. Fully exposed hangar bay. Pretty good. <laughs> fully exposed everything. Do you notice the fully exposed engine linkages? Do you see the fuel like pipelines Wait, that go to the you? center of the ship? Look at, this, look at the first image. That's you can see good. the pipelines. Yeah, everything is exposed on this thing. It's just... It's, like, it's literally all hanging out, man. This is like a fat middle-aged guy running down the street in a thong. It's just everything's hanging that, out to see. That's the thing, you gotta keep 300 miles away from the fight. <laughs> this ship is, like, in the lore, canonically, built very early on in the Cylon War. Uh, this design was actually, like, the second design iteration on an older cruiser that was decommissioned before the Cylon War began. But the whole point of this thing is it's kind of like a Franken designed by committee ship. Like, the, the Berserk is what happens when you let 50 different people in a room all add stuff on. So, using the third image I posted as an example, right? If you look on the broad sides, it's got smaller flak guns and point defense weapons, and then slightly higher up on the hull, it's got main guns for broadside brawling, but their arcs of fire are garbage because of everything else stacked on top. Uh, if you look right at the front, you'll notice a whole bunch of what looks like missile turrets. It's actually just a floating city that they built a ship around. That's, yeah. That's all that was. You, you know what my favorite part is? Look at the very nose. Look at the little guns it's got on the front. Yes. Like, it's just, it's it's so... Two little nostrils. <laughs> two, two little nostrils poking out at you. Oh my god, it looks like a face. The, yeah. The, the mouth and the... Oh god, dude, the ship gets uglier the more you look at it. And you can see it's also, it's got a hangar. Uh, it's got a full hangar as well. The uh, the Adamant can only recover fighters from directly in front, and then it relies on the launch tubes. This thing has launch tubes and a full flight deck, so it can vomit out raptors and vipers and stuff, and recover them at the same time, very easily, regardless of where its position in a fleet is. It's got the hangar bay because it's supposed to be a fleet carrier, and the reason it's got that disgusting amount of just you know, like metropolitan buildup all over it everywhere is because it is a fighter coordinator. If an entire fleet launches all of their fighters, this thing is supposed to be able to coordinate all of them and each of those like windows you see, all of that stuff. 
They're basically different mm -hmm. flight control centers that monitor different aspects of the, uh, the flight groups, right? And then moving on from the ship that tried to do everything and failed at everything, the Atlas Carrier. This is literally just a purpose-built carrier. It doesn't have big engines, like, at all. It's only got light weaponry on the broadsides, top and bottom, to try to fend off strike craft and, like, frigates and stuff that might be harassing it. But other than that, it is just a really big carrier. Similar to the Berserk, there's a giant flight deck that runs straight down the middle of the ship, and it's got a whole bunch of launch tubes on it. So this sucker is designed to just carry tons of fighters. Looks like it's really good at that job, so, I mean... Yeah, I mean, it carries the most fighters of any colonial ship until you get to, like, the battle stars, like, the really big ones, so... Yeah, it's it's a dedicated fleet carrier. It's pretty heavily armored, so it can take a decent punch, but it's... It's really not good at doing anything else besides launching fighters, coordinating them, and... Yeah, that's pretty much it. There's really not much to talk about. And uh, moving on from that, the only official quote-unquote support ship, the Celestra. This is pretty cool. I actually really like this thing because it's not, it's not like a military vessel. It's like a support and logistics vessel. That big flight deck in the center that you see, it goes through the whole ship just like the Atlas does. But uh, it uses its storage space and all of its stuff for either raptors and drones. The entire point of the Celestra is to repair the armor of colonial ships. It's got like repair facilities and drones and stuff on board to transfer supplies around and to carry restocks in battle for missiles. So if you pair a Celestra up with like a Ranger, for example, the Ranger can blow its load. The Celestra can basically repack all the missiles in live combat, and then the Ranger gets to have a round two. <laughs> Very useful ship. And not really that bad looking either. No, it's, it's not particularly bad. I mean, the Celestra is not a beautiful ship at all, but it looks industrial. It is built to be very purpose-driven. It's got, like, no armor on it. It's not designed to be in combat. It's designed to just support ships in the back line or after a fight. So I think it's I think it's pretty cool. And then the last one that we're going to talk about, we're, we're going to come back to this class later for a surprise segment at the end. But the second to last one we're going to talk about before the Jupiter, which we're just going to go over quickly because we've talked about that one before, is the Orion class Pocket Battlestar. This thing is... It's so, so weird. We, we gotta, we gotta talk about this for a little Is bit, okay? That... Looks like an absolute monstrosity, okay? But I want to explain something to you. This ship is tiny. It is, it is smaller than the Adamant class, okay? The, the, the Manticore is like the smallest ship. The Adamant is slightly bigger than the Manticore, but not too much bigger. And this thing is like the same size as an Adamant class. It's, it's tiny, right? But they call it a battle star. The, the Galactica is like five, six times this thing's size. So you see the twin hulls that it has on the front? You see how it's like that, that twin? Yeah. Yeah, those are actually two entirely separate hulls. They basically took the left and right half of this ship and they smooshed them together because there's actually another class of ship which this is based on. This is the Osiris you're looking at and it is a stealth ship. The special like gray, black, chromium, whatever composite that it's got on makes it invisible to Dratus, which is this, this universe's version of radar. Because it's so small and it's got this stealth coating, that's why it looks like such an absolute shit show of a ship. If you look on the bottom of it, you can see its balls dangling out below it, literally. Those yes. are those are its Dratus hubs, okay? That's that's its radar, basically. The giant sensor suite on the back, the giant prongs it's got back there, those are its communications arrays. It doesn't have room in the ship for those things. It, it, it physically cannot fit them in the ship. So they just put them on the bottom and we're like, well, I hope nobody shoots this. Even the back, the engines are super compact and super small to the point where they actually stacked like four different engine assemblies 
on the back of this ship. It's kind of hard to see with these images, but you can see the outboard flight pods, those big engines. Yeah. They, yeah. they just, they slapped those on. The, the ship is not supposed to have those regularly. It's supposed to be like regular inboard Yeah, it looks engines. like it's the normal two. Well, wait, you're saying they slapped all four on, not just the two on the side? Yeah, because they, they slapped more shit on the back. They had to put all of this greebly stuff all over the outside. It's got the exposed bridge just on that little neck up there. It's got all of its radar equipment and stuff. And if you really look at it, you'll notice that the Osiris doesn't actually have any big guns. Do you want to take a guess as to why? Uh, you said it's a stealth ship, so uh, hopefully it wouldn't need them. Um, I don't know. N no, the, the one time it shows up on screen, it gets absolutely bodied by a Cylon base star because it's got no guns to fight back with. It's just got it's got to arm the nukes, fly at it, and pray basically. The reason it doesn't have any big guns, unlike the Demeter class, which you can see in the model there, uh, is because, because it doesn't have room. Yes, but also the guns fuck with the stealth coating. The guns are so big and blocky that they actually reflect enough of a Dreadus signal that it completely compromises the stealth. But yeah, I think it's really, really cool. I like it. I also think it looks really, really stupid, and it literally has its balls flapping in the breeze, so you know. And that brings us to the Jupiter class, the Galactica. I don't think introductions are needed. I don't think we really need to go over this. We have talked about this ship at length many times. We've covered it multiple times, and if you scroll up in the Discord, we have plenty of images of it, so yeah. The Jupiter class, the Battlestar Galactica, the classic colonial Battlestar. Anything else to add before we move on to some post-Cylon War stuff? Not really, no. Go watch the other video. Oh, wait, yeah, no, sorry. This is an amazing time to shill. Uh, uh, what was it? The Battlestar Galactica lore primer. Go, go watch that. Then go watch the Mercury Battlestar, breakdown of the coolest ship ever. Two of our videos that we have done. This is not, this is not a question. This is not a request. Go do it now. Then come back here and finish this video. <laughs> no, watch this video again from the beginning. More watch minutes. Everything that comes after is post-Cylon War or developed right at the end. And I'm going to start this off with the Valkyrie class. And I want everybody who's about to shit a brick and tell me that the Valkyrie is a first Cylon War design, you are wrong. Okay? In Battlestar Galactica Deadlock, the game, and with a lot of the different canon sources, they talk about the Valkyrie as something that was either designed in the very, very late stages of the First Cylon War, or that was designed after it as a replacement to the hodgepodge that the Colonial Fleet has as a kind of standardized midline cruiser slash support ship. So you're saying it's... First Cylon War in the same way that Midway is Second World War. USS Midway, the carrier. Yes, that's that's a pretty good analogy, actually. Like, it was designed during the First Cylon War to be really hard-hitting and fast and maneuverable and stuff with, like, the uh, fighter complement to match. But it it's very small, and it's like a standardized ship's hull so that it's easy to mass produce. There's a lot of corners that were cut on it. Uh, and we're going to get into that. So firstly, the Valkyrie. This is the smallest Battlestar class that you can reasonably call a Battlestar. The Osiris that we talked about, that is a pocket Battlestar or a half pint, which is what the people actually call it in canon, which is hilarious. Um, That's pretty good. Yeah, but the Valkyrie is about triple the size of, uh, of an Osiris, and it's pretty loaded for bear. Uh, underneath the flight pods, it's got six Viper launch tubes pointing forward, so it can quickly recover and launch its squadron of fighters. Uh, the flight pods, I think, look really, really cool on this thing. It's got a way sleeker design than most uh, Colonial ships that came before. And this is actually designed to operate in fleets with the almighty Mercury class. So this thing is really, really cool. And the entire bottom of it has almost no armor. All the gribbly bits that you see under there and that vaguely cylindrical shape that you can see, that is actually the jump drive. The, the entire housing for the engine and the jump drive is exposed on the bottom of the ship, and there's almost no guns or anything down there because that's what they decided to skimp on. It's got really heavy armor on the top and sides, it's really fast, it's really maneuverable, it's got missiles, guns, and fighters. The entire bottom of the ship is basically missing. That's what they cut off of this thing to make it cheap and easy to build. 
right. I have a comment about this that I will be taking no questions on. Um, that first picture that you sent me of it, uh, it's it's just a fish swimming through the water. That I, I will be accepting no questions on the matter. I hate the fact that you're right and that I never saw that. I don't think that's intentional, but oh my god, yeah, it really does. I rest my case. <laughs> You're, you're going to be getting so many questions. You're going to be getting so many questions in the comments about that. You say no questions will be asked. Questions will be asked. No questions will be answered. There you go. That's more realistic. Um, yeah, I mean, that's that's the Valkyrie. This thing was designed to operate in wolf packs. Um, it was designed to be super mass produced, like I've said. But the Battle Doctrine was to basically have this thing supporting like a Mercury class and functioning with two or three other Valkyries operating almost as support or distraction. So the Mercuries and the bigger classes of ships would function as the main heart of a fleet and would draw fire, while the Valkyrie would maneuver itself onto an enemy's flanks and, you know, contribute supporting fire or use its missiles and flak battery system to protect other fleet elements. Even though this thing is way smaller than most of the main big battle stars and stuff, it's still got the flak screen, which makes it very, very difficult for missiles and fighters to deal with. And moving on from that, we have personally, personally, my second favorite design behind the Mercury for battle stars, the Minerva. And this thing is really cool because it's like a mix between the battle star Galactica and the Mercury. Here on screen... That looks like a real chonky boy. Yeah, so the first image is the Minerva proper. Just, mm, beautiful. And you can definitely see the resemblance to the Mercury. This thing is way smaller. Way, way smaller. And, and basically just scaled it down and changed the engines on it. And maybe the head a little bit. Yeah, head a little bit too. The head is actually, like, identical to the Battlestar Galactica. Yeah, everything looks the same except for the very tail end of it. It doesn't look like it's tapered in as much. And the whole point of the Minerva is kind of an in-between. So the Battlestar Galactica was a brick shithouse that pumped out damage, and the Mercury was just an unstoppable war machine that also carried an armada with it. This thing is kind of an in-between. The Minerva has absolutely ludicrous numbers of guns all over it. It's extremely fast, and it's got a huge fighter complement. The Minerva has the double stacked flight pods that the Mercury does. So like the uh, the Valkyrie and the Galactica, like the Jupiter class, they only have mm -hmm. one flight pod on each side, right? So they carry quite a few fighters, but not an absurd amount. The Minerva, just like the Valkyrie, has one flight pod on the top and then a second one mirrored and sandwiched on the bottom. So it's got functionally double the number of flight space and launch tubes as other battle stars. The downside is in order to make all of this work with the older technology of the time that they were designing this ship with, it is very fragile. It's one of the most fragile battle stars and basically relies on getting the drop on its opponent. If it comes down to like a 1v1 fight or if it ambushes an opponent, there's basically nothing any other ship can do to survive an assault by a Minerva. It's just got so much firepower and it's so maneuverable that it's going to hammer you to pieces before you can react. What are those little holes for, like, at the back of the heads? Because it's been on, like, all of them. Oh, um, so those are, like, never modeled correctly in games or whatever. And when you see them on screen, they're normally never the focus. But those are gun bays. Um, big... What? Big old chunky turrets sit in there and they fire forward or they fire out to the side or they're missile tubes that sit in those little indents. That's that's what they are. If you see them on the Valkyrie, oh, if you see them on the, the Minerva, you see them on the Mercury class, those are, those are basically just really big gun ports. Because they don't model the guns in there in a lot of the concept art, they just look like eyes. <laughs> it just looks like the Colonials gave eyes to all of their ships for no reason. The last one looks like a fish. Um, the Mercury class is the next one. This one we have talked about at length. Another shameless self-promotion. We have an entire ass video on the Mercury Battlestar. Um, I recommend go you watch go watch video. that. Yeah, it's, it's a much better video than we could ever hope to convey here. And there's actually enough lore to make a full video on it. The reason we're doing this, you know, greatest hits lineup, right, is because the, there's almost no lore for, like, any of these ships. 
the only lore that it exists is from like one game and a wiki article it's impossible to make like any significant video on them that's why they're all showing up here so we can briefly talk about them and then move on but yeah the mercury is amazing it is the sexiest battleship in the entire series and with all of that done pre-cylon war during the cylon war post-cylon war designs that should have been where we ended but i lied there's a fourth segment and that is Question oh questionably <laughs> canon ships, okay? There, there's a few things that, that I need to that I need to state, okay? Battlestar Galactica okay. has so many assets which would have been canon if the actual projects they were designed for ever got made. Battlestar Galactica Blood and Chrome was a movie that was supposed to be an entire ass television show, like a giant series that takes place during the Cylon War. It's where a lot of these ships come from. It's where a lot of stuff uh, like was first designed and pitched and it got canceled and all of those assets were thrown out the window. So a lot of this stuff is tenuously canon because the creators mention them on screen. They say the name of the ship or they'll very briefly show it during a flyby, right? But it never actually shows up on screen besides that and there's no other information on it. So, uh, we are going to start with the Hornet. So, these ships are fugly. They, like, th this thing is just fugly. There's no way around that. It is it is a disgustingly ugly ship. But that's uh, because... Boss. it is Actually, yes, it is. This is a late Cylon War design... So this is actually a converted civilian freighter. That's what it looks like. That's what the creators said the inspiration was. And it's designed to be like almost an, an ironclad, like World War I style design almost influence. You can see the bridge on the top there is fully exposed. And it's got spindly little struts holding it up, which is not enough. Uh... It's got a flight deck that has been hastily installed in the center. You can even see the ribs of the flight deck exposed on the bottom there where they made supporting struts and stuff for it. Um, it's got an absolute ton of heavy artillery that was strapped onto the sides, the bottom, the top, and it's got a super heavy broadside. If you actually look at the back there, you see what mm -hmm. looks like uh, those big rows of, of stuff. We don't actually know what those are. Those those were never explained canonically what those are. My best guess is that those are either a shitload of missile tubes, which is a little excessive, I think, or those are flak batteries to, to make that giant flak screen that the Colonials love so much. How big is this thing? Because those don't don't look big enough to, unless this thing's huge. I mean, you can, you can see a little Raptor in there. You can see it launching off the front of the flight deck. Um... If, okay, okay. Yeah, it's it's not too big. It's a civilian ship that was refit. And speaking of refits, the next one is the Alert. And this is the same class of ship, except a different type of refit, right? Someone took a civilian freighter, like a cargo hauler, right? And they refit it to do one of two different things. The first one looks like a gunboat, right? Like just they strapped a million guns and stuff onto it and gave it a few fighters just because... And the second one looks like a more dedicated carrier almost and support craft because it doesn't have any of those big cannons on it. It's just got a few of them, like one on the bottom, a couple on the top. And then it's got a ton of smaller like auto cannons and point defense guns over it. And it's got that massive flight pod just sticking out the bottom like a tumor. So you said the, the other one was like inspired by the Ironclad and stuff. Uh, this really looks like the CSS Virginia. Yeah, I, they're, I, I just told you, they're the same ship. Okay. Look at them. They're they're the exact same base ship. They hey were man. just... Hey, man. Did you specifically say CSS Virginia? Oh, my God. I, You know what? Fine. Yes, it's the CSS Virginia. There you go. Thank you. Are you happy Thank now? Thank you. So these ships are not canon, but they've been mentioned by the creators that they would have shown up if the series actually continued. So that's why I'm putting them under questionably canon. There's enough information about them and, like, 3D models and stuff that I'm convinced that they would have shown up. And next one up is the Demeter. We talked about this briefly. This is the original version of the Osiris. This is this is what the Osiris is based off of. And they basically just munched a Demeter to create that one. 
This one is more canon than the last ones because we actually do see it on screen in Blood and Chrome, but only for like mm -hmm. five seconds as they fly past the engine block and that's pretty much it. That's, that's literally all you see. So as you can see, like the catamaran design, the twin hulls, on the Osiris, they smushed those together super tight. These, this is the original configuration. Just cut out the, middle, the middle portion of it and <laughs> welded it back together. Pretty much, yeah, that's exactly what they did. And they stapled more engines on. Um, in this version of it, though, you can see it's got uh, four main heavy batteries. It's got three guns on the front on each side and three guns on the back on each side, set up in like main battery and stuff to fire in sync. Um, just in front of the engines, you notice all those little cutouts and what look like little turrets? You see those on the back there? Uh, yeah, barely, yeah. Yeah, those are a bajillion missiles. Like, so the Osiris had, like, big nuclear missiles because that's the only thing it had to do damage. But this thing actually has, like, interceptor missiles. It fires tons of these little missiles. Each one of those is a quadruple missile launcher. I think it's, I think, no, no, the Orion, the Orion class. Uh, they're called pocket battle stars because they have about as much firepower as a battle star does, but they're an absolute glass cannon. They're very small, they're very quick, but they have basically negative survivability. So this is the Defender class. Now, we're going to briefly go over it as I find a few more images of it, but the Defender is another fan-designed ship that became canon, but the story on this one is a lot different. So, firstly, it is a very unique design because the center head of it splits into those two long catamaran-style engines, and suspended in between them, that's a really bad angle, suspended in the middle of that, a uh, small little flight pod, where just uh, like, you know, the battle stars and stuff, it's, it's got the fighters and everything in it. Oh, okay. That's a little weird placement for that. Um... It's, it's a very weird ship. It's a very strange ship. It's it. Somebody just straight up ripped off a Y wing, and then they made the tail a little bit taller. That's and then I slapped the uh, external fuel tank fuel tank on there. This this ship is a fucking nightmare, dude. Are you? We're we're gonna talk less about the ship and more about story time. You ready for story time of IP and yes. development hell? Okay. Yes. So, just like the Nova, the Defender was designed by one dude who was a fan, who was working on basically, you know, Battlestar Galactica fan stuff, right? It's non-canon, pure fiction, designing ships, drawing stuff, whatever. He's a really good artist, actually, okay? And then the ship shows up for a grand total of, like, 10 seconds during the remaster series. When it shows uh -huh. up... Right when it shows up in the Battlestar Galactica television series, it's tiny. It's like it, it's a civilian ship. It's not particularly big. It wasn't a warship, but they put it in there, and a lot of people think that it was put in as like a nod to the person who made it because it shows up for like two episodes. It shows up very briefly when they're escaping from the colonies as the Cylons attack, and then it shows up for like five seconds as it gets lost in a nebula and explodes. So, <laughs> yeah, it, it doesn't show up very much, but that was basically the sum of its existence. And then it started showing up more, and it showed up in Battlestar Galactica Deadlock. They never attributed the design to the person who made it, and a lot of people think now that it was stolen. That someone looked at this design, went, that's really good, and then made a stock 3D asset of it that was then used in, in future examples. Like that first image I showed, uh, that's from Battlestar Galactica Deadlock, I think, because its scale keeps changing. Remember when I told you like when we see the Demeter, right? We see it for like five seconds. That's during mm -hmm. Blood and Chrome and it's during the Ghost Fleet. We see this ship in there for like two seconds and it's small again. And you wanna know what gets even worse about this? This ship exists in other science fiction properties as well. Several of them. Bruh. Yeah, there's a there's a series or it's like one movie or one television show or whatever. I don't know. I don't actually know Firefly. That's like the one sci-fi universe I don't know. But this ship shows up in there as well for a faction called the Reavers. Like, someone stole this dude's hard work. They made a 3D asset of it. 
then they kept selling it to different companies making science fiction things, never once giving attribution, and no one can get anything consistent about this ship. Sometimes the flight pod is there, sometimes it's not. Sometimes it's on the top and it's the command bridge, sometimes it's not. Sometimes it just doesn't even have those big engines on the back and it's just like a... Are you laughing or just breathing really hard yes, into the microphone? I'm laughing. I'm laughing. Oh god. The the poor guy as well. He's been called out for it like five times, eh? This is not this really? channel and our content is not the first time people have made videos about this. There, there's like an entire video from a, a channel called Space Doc, I think, talking about this ship specifically and going over like th that's where I learned about this, actually. That's where I learned about the story behind this thing and went to go dig into it for myself. And the poor guy keeps getting shafted no nobody acknowledges none of the big companies acknowledge that it was his thing they just stole it and they're like it's mine now all right that's pretty much it that's all of the canon colonial ships that we know exist that's a whole bunch of non-canon ones which have either been mentioned shown up or been talked about in canon settings and that is functionally the end of the video we've been going for an hour and 20 minutes so i lied this was quite a bit longer than i thought it was going to be but it's fine make sure you all go watch the other videos Yep, you've got about three hours more. Mm. You have about ten hours of content that you have to go watch because you got to go watch all of them. <laughs> you don't just get to stop. Every everything. Once you start, that's it. You're not allowed to stop until you've hit the final video we've uploaded, and then you have to like sit there, keep keep clicking refresh until we upload the next one. Oh well, that's gonna be that. I hope you all enjoyed it. I hope everyone had a wonderful time going over this mess any any parting remarks steve-o thank y'all for all the support that y'all have been giving us uh so far and helping us get to where we are so quickly yeah that's actually it's been remarkable we've been growing so fast it's it's almost unbelievable i have been blindsided multiple times by how much support you guys have shown it's absolutely fantastic uh real quick before we end off we are going to be making a Patreon. Uh, more details will follow either in a community announcement or at the beginning of the next episode we release with more details about what's going to be offered, what that whole setup is going to be, and what you can expect from it, as well as the payment tiers and stuff. So, I guess look forward for that. And, uh, and if you have any suggestions for it, feel free to let us know oh, in yeah, the comments. Yeah, yeah. Uh, if you have any other suggestions, let us know. We're currently working through the details of that, but if you guys want anything bad enough or if there's any really good ideas, we'll incorporate that stuff in as well. Uh, this is this is such a stupid train of thought. Okay, the video's over. Just it, It's over. Goodbye. Have a good day. Thank you.